Okay, now we established in an earlier capsule that cardiovascular exercise is not the devil. Now, how much of it should you do, when, and how? Well, it depends. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're looking for cardiovascular exercise as a way to reprogram your body to become efficient at utilizing fat for fuel, I do believe that fasted morning cardio is the best solution. And it's actually been demonstrated by a recent study that, that fasted cardio is the form of exercise that upregulates, big word, increases, uh, the enzymes responsible for mobilizing fat and using it for fuel. So if you're looking simply to reprogram your body to use fat for fuel, fasted morning cardio has many advantages over any other given time in the day. It doesn't burn more calories, but it reprograms your body in the long term. So if that's what you're trying to accomplish, then that might be the best solution possible. Now, uh, if you're looking for cardiovascular exercise as a way to help you recover from your workout, bring yourself back down, then there's actually a case for doing uh, some cardio at the end of your workout. But you have to be careful. The problem is that a high level or high amount of cardiovascular exercise will inhibit mTOR. What do I mean? Well, mTOR is the light switch that triggers protein synthesis, muscle building. So you want that activated. Now, if you do too much cardio, well, more importantly, if you burn too much energy, you will increase an enzyme called AMPK, which can inhibit mTOR and thus protein synthesis. So you really don't want to have high intensity or long duration cardio after your workout. So you can have low intensity, steady state cardio at the end of a training session, but in a low amount, 15, 20 minutes. That's the most I would recommend. Now that amount will actually allow you to recover a bit faster from your workout, will bring your back down, will help, adrenaline comes down. So it's a pretty good cool down after a session while also increasing fat loss a bit because the actual session likely either used up a lot of glycogen or increased growth hormone production, which will increase the reliance on fat on that low intensity cardio. So it doesn't burn that much, but it's a little extra bonus and that will help you recover. Uh, I'm doing that myself after my heavy session and it really helps. Uh, and with exercise, that, that's the thing with exercise also. People think, well, if I'm not doing an hour, it's not worth doing. Well, you know what? every little bit helps. So for recovery, cardio, low intensity, because if you go intervals, or if you go long duration post-workout, you will kill your gains from the workout, no doubt about it. But if it's very low intensity, like 110, 115 beats per minute, for 15, 20 minutes, it's just gonna help with recovery, it's not gonna hurt at all. If what you want is just general health, improving cardiovascular efficiency, uh, lowering blood pressure. I would actually recommend early day cardio. Doesn't necessarily have to be fasted, uh, but earlier the better because uh, especially if you, if you want to work on cardiovascular health, there's a good chance that you might want to go a bit longer or a bit more intense. So that might increase cortisol a bit. So if you are to increase cortisol, might as well increase it when it should be high in the morning. Now, people ask me about intervals. Well, intervals are good if you are already good at mobilizing fat because intervals are intense. You go all out, let's say 30 seconds, and you go slow pace for 30, 60 seconds, go back and forth, back and forth. So the eye intensity forces you to use glucose for fuel primarily, which is not necessarily a bad thing because if you are good at mobilizing fat, those intervals do represent a deficit, but more importantly, they will increase your metabolic rate post-workout. And in that recovery period, 
you, if you're good at mobilizing fat, you will rely on fat for fuel. And if your metabolic rate is higher, that means you're burning more fat during the recovery period. So that's one of the main benefits of the intervals. It's increasing metabolic rate, but it works mostly or only really if you are decent at utilizing fat for fuel. Otherwise, you will just crash by burning more glycogen and more glucose. So really, it's a matter of what you're like. I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, for example, well, intervals might be great, provided that you're in a phase of your dieting that has plenty of carbs. Doing high-intensity intervals when you are on a 25 grams of carbs and you're lifting weights might not be such a good idea because you might be catabolic or increase cortisol too much. But doing intervals when your, cor your carbohydrates intake is pretty high will be very effective. So really, there are no good or bad way of doing cardio. Or it's just a matter of what you're trying to accomplish with this type of training. Now, I, I would just say one thing, though. What I just mentioned is probably the ideal situation. But in reality, the true answer would probably be when's the best time to do cardio? It's when you can. Because doing it is better than not doing it. Even if it's like at a bad time, it's still better than not doing anything. So I just presented you the best solution. But really, if you do it at any time, it's still gonna do something good. Especially when it comes to your cardiovascular health.